everybody it's Angela back here today and I'm here again to welcome you all and have you join me make another um, example or episode in the exciting envelope series so I'm here today with number nine so <laughs> here it is this is what I've done well this is how it's going to end up looking and you would have seen a little preview on um, Instagram that I had yesterday. Um, so what I have got here is um, an envelope that I got from the lovely Carol Parker from the Oak House Journals. Thank you, Carol. She presented me with two very long envelopes, which I'll show you in a moment. And she challenged me to do something with those. So... This is what I've done, Carol, so I hope you you like it. So let's have a look inside quickly, and then I will take you um, through all of that. Gosh, I really should have tied my hair up. Okay, so here we go. So this is what it looks like from the top. So we've got a little bit of a window here. I've used a different die cut that I had. Um, and when we open up that side there, we've got a beautiful picture of a hydrangea over there let me just check i've got this so when i open that up like that this is the full length of the actual envelope itself i've actually taken off maybe half a centimeter here so that is the the actual width and the length and i'll give you the details in a minute and then what i did was i took another one and i put that over like that so we've got two little pockets with journal cards in inside there like that and that goes in there I had the sense to make the thumb goodies today <laughs> <coughs> sorry so we've got two of those like that and we've got a little vellum pocket because it was getting quite chunky a vellum pocket that I have um, just made a little tag to go inside there with some of the scraps and then a little piece of ephemera. So we've got a beautiful image of roses here. All of this paper is from Antique Papery. So I will show you what that looks like in a minute. So these just go into that little pocket like that. And no, that's not all folks. So we close that up and we lift it up like that. Um, and we've got another pocket with some more bits of ephemera with another vellum sort of little pocket that goes inside there. So that's that. So we can close that all up like that. Oh, um, this side's also got some paper on it like that. And then um, that card fits nicely over there. That one folds over like that. And yes, we can write on the back as well. I've put some avocado dyed paper here. Now, what this is, it's the part of the flap of the envelope. So if I had to take a page like this, you could actually stick this down um, by gluing that flap there like that on your page. You could do it lower um, and not use that um, and just glue around there and stick that down and make a pocket if you want or use the flap, um, glue that down like that. So that you can lift up there, write or stick a secret note underneath and journal on the top over there um, at the back. So that's up to you. So that's the way I would use it in a journal. It is a bit uh, chunky. It is. Uh, you could give it as a happy mail. It would be a lovely thing to use as one of my subscribers suggested um, a gift card um, and a card and all in one. You could use it to... Put some money in there if it's for teenagers or for some other people or anything like that. So it doesn't only have to go in your journal. So this is what I've come with, up with using Ch um, Carol's uh, very long and narrow envelopes. So I hope you like what we, we're going to have a try of doing today. Okay, so let me show you what you're going to need first of all. So now I can put that page away. Now, first of all, I've been talking about these envelopes, and this is what they look like. How long are these? These are four and a half inches wide and 12 and a quarter inches long. That is long. And the back of them, they have this kind of a flap. 
So I can hardly get it on the screen, they're so long. And Carol hasn't mentioned to me where she got them from, but I will try and see if I can find that out shortly. But she had these, um, she might um, she might have been gifted them or something. But I don't think, um, I haven't managed to see them on Amazon or anything, but I don't even know what they are called. But they're the, the width of a normal envelope, um, just extremely long. So I don't know if you guys um, are able to get something like this, if it's got a specific name. But I suppose you could just use two normal size envelopes and um, join those up as well. So this is what we're going to be using today. Two of these. So you want two really long envelopes. And then um, you want a little bit of vellum. So I've used all tracing paper. This I think is a hundred gram vellum. It's quite sturdy. 100 grams per sheet. And then um, the pages that we're going to use or that I've chosen to use today. Um, I've got this one, which I think is from um, Nagasaki, and I love hard rangers, so that's the one I'm going to use. I did not use this in the full size. I have reduced this to print two per page, so they come out two of this size per page, and I've used them in this format. So you want to print off one of those sheets. Then I have also gone and got this, which is from the Daphne collection I used um, before. So it's also got the roses on, and I, I quite like I'm going to use some of this, not to make it overly floral. And then I have got this as well, which I think is also from the Daphne collection. So um that's the, the pages that i'm going to use today for everything okay so that's what we're going to use and then what i've tried to make this um not too long because they seem to get really long what you need to do is the following so you might need to use more than two envelopes if you can't um, find one this long but you can also use ones that are maybe a bit shorter um, I'm going to cut two pieces off the one. It's up to you. Use what you have and adapt accordingly. Um, you know, or um, you could use cardstock as well if that's what you wanted to do. You don't have to use an envelope. This is just what um, I was given. So what I've done here is, let's start with the easy bit. Okay, so the first thing I've done here is I've divided my envelope into three even parts. So thirds. And I've drawn lines on here because we're going to cover this anyway. All right, so that's the first envelope. You want to divide it into three. So that's the one that's going to go on the bottom. Um, and it'll go this way. No. <coughs> Sorry, it'll go this way. Then the one that's going to fit on the inside. So when I say bottom, I mean this, the bigger one. And then this is the one on the inside. Um... What we are doing there is, I've divided again into three, but what I've done is, if you, I'll try and hold this up so you can see, um, ever so, a little, uh, just ever so slightly, I've drawn a line slightly inside of that line and slightly inside of that line. And the reason is when you fold the envelopes, you, um, the outer one needs to be ever so slightly, a couple of millimeters wider on the bottom of uh, this one underneath, if that makes sense. So that when you fold this over, it's going to lie smoothly. So that's the first thing you want to do. So divide it into thirds. And then what I did was, um, in order to make the flap, so this piece over here, I've just taken an, an estimation of how wide I wanted that flap to be. Um, and then what I did was I cut off four and a half centimeters or just short of two inches that side and just short of two inches on that side. And that's really up to you. So we're going to be left with that piece as the flap. That's the middle. That's the other flap. And then this one over here will be the base. And then the two sides that fold each other. This one will have a window and that will not. So that's what we're going to do. So that's what you need to do first of all. And when I draw it up like this, it makes it easier to understand what you've got to do with what. So that's step number one. All right. So once you've ascertained 
uh, what you want, what envelopes you're going to use, or cardstock and your measurements. Then what you need to do is we're going to get rid of this flap here and that side of the flap there, keeping this this middle bit in between the lines. So this is the bit that will glue it to your page. So if you're going to use this as a pocket and a tag behind, you would not need to do this. But I am going to have it lifting up. So I'm going to take that off both of the envelopes. So let's just do that ever so quickly. So you're going to be left with something like that on both of them. All right, so let's just take this one off as well. Okay, so we have our two pieces now like that. That one will be going on the bottom with the divided into three. This one will be going on the top. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to um, cut off this piece here and cut off along that line there. So again, um, I'm going to just use my scissors and I'm going to just cut off these bits here. Now you can keep these bits and make a little pocket for something or use them for something else, but we aren't going to use them in this project today. But I wouldn't throw them away, you know. They could be used, if you glue the other side there, you could actually use that for some kind of a pocket or something. You could do something with that. So we'll just put that over there. So that's how that one's going to be. Um, this one over here, the only thing I want to trim off this one, as far as these pieces are concerned, I want to take um, a quarter of an inch off here. So uh, just short of a centimeter, really. Um, just so that when I fold this flap in, it's not going to go right up against that fold line and make a problem for this one. So I'm just going to um, take my uh, ruler um, and a pencil. I'm just guesstimating it here and I'm going to take off about that much. And I'm going to cut that off there as well because that will be a pocket as well. So that's what we are going to do. Okay. Okay, I hope that's not too confusing. Right, so now what we want to do is we want to score. If you've got a scoring board, I do, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use my bone folder when I find it. Here it is. And my ruler. And um, I just want to score along these uh, lines that I've drawn here. So we want to score along that line. Uh, I want to just score along this line here. Okay. We're going to fold this one in along the score line. Make sure it's nice and straight. Match up your bottoms. And just burnish that like that. And then you're going to do the same with this bit over here. Like that. Okay. So there we go. That's that's the, the outer one. Just like that. And then we'll just put that aside. We're going to take this one here. I can just tuck that under for the moment. And we're going to um, school along that line and that line. Because that's our fold lines for our tags. Pockets for our tags. So we're going to just do that as well. Remember these ones were measured slightly inside our other ones just so that it's going to lie nice and flat um, which we'll check in a minute <laughs> let's hope that that all works out how I want it to okay and then again just burnish those really well and then the same with this one I'm not going to be doing that much sewing on this one, only on the front, very front piece, which um, I decided um, not to do <laughs> yesterday when I was working on this. 
Okay, so now just to double check, we've got our flap, what's left of it at the back. We've got our two pieces over here. We want to open that flap up. This is now going to fit on the inside here. We just want to make sure that it's going to lie flat when we close it, which it is. All right. So therefore, when you tap it down like that, you want to make sure that this is going to lie as flat as possible. That meaning that nothing's going to bow from the inside there. So as you can see, because we measured that inside one slightly in from the lines, um, that is perfect now for what we want. So we've got a whole structure here now, and we're able to start with um, putting it all together. All right, so it's going to look like that. So now all we need to do is cover the various sections. And that's um, where we're going to go from here. So what I did was I started on the outside one. And the first thing is we start with the most difficult section, which is going to be this flap here. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. We need some acetate so um, for that window, if you've got some from Recycled or um, I've got some on a roll as well. So I'll grab some of that as well. Um, but before we get to that, um, let me just let's just talk about this piece here. So the first thing I would suggest you do is actually put on the back piece here. So we want to put on this actual back piece over here. And I've taken that um, from, I took it from this piece here in the corner and I've measured that up like that. And I've, I've cut that off there and, and that's the piece I'm gonna use. So if I look for it quickly, it's in my pile here. Okay, so here it is, and that will fit really nicely over there. I've inked it up already for I don't do much inking anyway, and I'm going to put that on there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this up. Something else I did because this is a white envelope, and I usually um, don't like a stark white um, paper. I'm just take, going to take my um, ink dauber and I'm going to very quickly just run it wherever I think there's going to be a bit of a, a lot of white showing. So not too dark. That was a bit dark over there for me. Just very lightly, just go around, um, especially in the, in the joins, like these fold lines okay and then um, that just sorts out all of that oh, I didn't really need to speed that up because I'm talking nonsense as I'm doing it <laughs> okay so there we go as, as light as that just gives it a bit of dirt uh, looking there I wasn't really going for the grunge look but it just took away the the white so there we go we've got that bit sorted out there so now what we can do is we can just stick this down with our glue all right, now stick it quite well because I'm going to run it through my die cut machines. You don't want pieces lifting up. So I'm going to use um, my Fabri-Tac glue. Just make sure I've got this lettering the right way. And I'm going to make sure it gets as close as possible to the edge. About a millimeter away. I know I'll say that every time. <laughs> Sick of me saying that probably by now. And then making sure that everything is pretty well glued so that when I do run this through the die cut none of the little bits are going to lift up all right so I'm going to stick that down there measure it all up okay you can see I'm not going straight into the fold line it's got about two millimeters or so so an eighth of an inch just away from the fold line you always want to make sure that you do that because otherwise it's going to make it really awkward to lie flat so there's that bit there and then what I'm going to do is with the same um, breath I'm going to stick on the front bit so again just run this over the various areas just so that I can take the stark white away Okay. 
I was only going to do 10 of these in the series, but I might end up doing more because I suddenly had another burst of inspiration yesterday. And, and when I was looking at these envelopes, I, I came up with a whole lot of other sort of ideas. So um, not necessarily with these, but, you know, just with envelopes. I'm just going to see how far um, you'll get sick of it. So <laughs> let's just see how, how much how far that is. OK, back to the program. Right. So that one's there. Now, this is the front cover. And what I did here was I'm going to use um, this piece here to go on to this piece here. Yeah. Um, slightly too wide. So I'll just trim that off quickly with my, sorry, my craft knife. Just a sliver. Okay. So that's that's there, and this is from one of the Daphne pages, and I'll show you quickly. It is the same page we took. We took that piece off there, and now I've just taken the other side over there. So that's going to go over there. Okay, so I'm going to stick that down. Don't worry about anything there. We're not going to put a tag in here, so that's not going to matter today. We'll have enough uh, uh, tags going in the rest of the areas today. Okay. So let me know if you are keen to do more than just one more in the series, or if you are getting sick and you want me to do something else. That's also fine. I'm not going to take offence. Um, but everybody keeps telling me they're enjoying it. Um, so I'll just carry on doing it if you do enjoy it. Obviously, I will try and think of other things as well, but um, maybe interleave it with other things. OK, so there we've got that on the front. We've got that on the back. Now, what uh, we need to do is, and I'm going to quickly just carry on here quickly, is um, stick on these other bits. So the one that's going to go on the back here is um, some peachy paper I've just taken my avocado dyed paper I've used my tear ruler and I'm going to quickly stitch that um, so I'll do that quickly and I'll be back here in a second okay so there we go I've got that all sorted um, if you if you want you can just you know use tea stain paper any paper you want I just thought this would be nice at the back just to make some little secret notes or, or some journaling on it. And I'm going to stick that quickly on the back. And again, we don't have to worry about um, uh, this little tuck open part of the envelope because we're not going to use that section for anything like that. So let's just... We'll just stick that down as evenly as we can. You can use your bone folder if you want or whatever. All right, and then we want to do um, this other side, which is a hydrangea piece over there. This comes from a different piece. Um, it looks like that. And we're going to stick that on this side here. And then that, of course, comes from that Nagasaki paper. Um, and as I said to you, I did two to a page. And so I've just cut it out from that piece over there. Um, I do try and use all the bits as much as possible. So um, I'm trying to eliminate, uh, like all of you, our uh, scraps. And what's left over I use for tags and whatever else I'm up to. Okay, so... This one does have a, um, a tag going in, so you want to go really carefully along the top edge there and then just glue a centimetre or a quarter of an inch away um, there so that you don't glue the, the tag or make it difficult for the tag to go in. All right, so that will go on this bit over here. That looks about right. I did realise that these envelopes are slightly uh, wider at the top to the bottom, which is, or was it the other way around? But one of the sides, they're not dead straight down, so that made my life a bit difficult. 
Okay, so um, we've got that all sorted. So if we turn that over, that is our opening. And like always, I just like to draw an arrow there so I remember that. <laughs> and then that side doesn't have an opening. This side is going to get a um, piece on as well. So we are going to put this piece in the bottom. So we'll do that. And that again comes from that original piece over here which is this section over here that i'm going to put in over there so that is that one i think oops so that one's going to go right over here like that so we don't have anything we have a, a, a piece of vellum that's going to go over there because i had to start keeping it um as you know as with as little make it with as little as little bulk as I possibly could so I thought vellum's always lovely because then you can see the, the flowers and things below that as well and you're not covering up the beautiful images so that's why it's a good thing so that's going to go over here just make sure I'm matching this properly okay oops that's my pencil on the floor right so there's that Okay, and then the last bit is this bit over here, which is the other side. It's those lovely, they look like nasturtiums, I think, um, which is on that same Nagasaki piece of paper um, at the bottom over there. So that's the piece we're going to use. And so I have cut that out and that is going to go over this piece right over here. Um, and as we know, we've got a tag over there, so... All right, so let's put that piece on there. Okay, so there's that. We're going to put that on over there and up to the top. Move that up a bit. It. okay okay and as i've told you you've got your gaps you haven't gone right to the fold line so that when you fold these over these aren't going to present that as a problem okay so just keep on doing that okay so that one would go underneath that one would go over top over the top now that's what's going to shine through the window which we're now going to make over here so what we're going to do quickly um, is <laughs> just get it all together here yeah? right um so what i'm going to do now is we want to make this window now i've just taken i don't have a dead square um die i got these on amazon months and months and months ago so it was just um not even an expensive make i've just got this template that i'm going to use you can use a circle you can use an oval you can use whatever you have so use what you have if you don't have any die cuts use your um ruler and cut it out like that start and um, cut the lines with a craft knife that's another way you can do it you don't have to have a window at all that's the other thing all right so i'm just doing that because i like windows and then i'm going to show you how we tackle that so the first thing i'm going to do is go and run this uh, put that die cut on there and uh, run it through now um this is the the, the front of it so you want to make sure you centralize that um the best that you can all right so i'll be back here in a second okay so there we have it i've cut that out nicely I have made mine slightly over to the left. I did that on purpose so that I, I because I want to put on some of these and I wanted it just a little bit more space. So I did purposely move that over slightly this side. So I'm quite happy with that. I did have to use my craft knife just to alleviate some of the areas because it is quite thick. There are quite a few layers of envelope and two layers of paper. So it does become a bit of a struggle 
for the <laughs> die cut so um anyway there we go nice clean cut and i'm happy with that so what i'll do quickly is just take my um distress ink and very lightly um i am just running that over there ever so lightly okay so now what we want to do is um we want to put in some acetate all right so i've got the acetate here um i've got this on a roll because i ran out of all my packaging and this is what they would use for cakes so um you know you can get this really reasonably um and what i want to do is just cut a piece off here it's quite, quite hard to see when it's clear so <laughs> i should really lay it down okay so there we've got that um, and that should fit over there pretty well. And now I just want to make sure that I have the right length. So I'm going to just cut it off right over there. Okay, so that's going to cover the window. So now what we need to do is we need to just make a space for it to go in. So what I did was... <laughs> I didn't think it through the first time and now when I did um, I've done exactly what I did the first time um, so I'm just going to take a very thin um, sliver of the envelope off there and why, why I'm doing that I will stitch that is because I've got an opening then for the acetate to fit into all right so let's just make sure I've got this that way is the right way Okay, so don't worry because we are going to stitch. You don't have to stitch, you can just glue. And I'm going to do both. <laughs> so we're going to just position that where we want that to be, like that. All right, and then what you do is get your glue. I'm going to use this one that's got a narrow um, opening. And this becomes tricky. But this is how I did it yesterday. Open up the each side of your window. If you've got a narrow tipped glue, then this is great. It will um, just push some of the glue where you want it, just to hold it in place. Like that. Okay. And then just push it down gently now don't when you're gluing try and glue over there don't go and glue over there it's going to squeeze onto your window so um that'll hold it in place for the meantime and then anywhere where if you're not going to stitch this then just glue it close to the edge as well to make sure it's sealed all right i am going to stitch this because that's just the only bit of stitching i want to do on here other than what I did on that piece over there. All right, so I will meet you back here in a second. I'm going to um, stitch around the edge there quickly. All right, so without letting this shine into the light, you can see I've just done a stitch all around there. Um, I have glued, as I showed you earlier, it's got a bit of, picked up a bit of dust, but that will just take off at the end. And there we have our front window so far. We'll get to the decorator, the decorative pieces at the end. Sorry for bumping this, just getting my leg round. Okay, so I'm quite happy with all of that. Um, what we want to do now here is just put on a piece of vellum, which I did have somewhere. All right, so here I've got a piece of vellum. I just want to match this up and make a little pocket so it's probably two inches deep um i need my pencil i, I think i've dropped about four pencils on the floor <laughs> story of my life right okay so there we want that like that just making a little notch there and a little notch there and i'm going to just move that out the way quickly it stands nicely i won't be needing that anymore and then i can just you know i've got the paper trimmer right behind me but i i <laughs> i resort to this okay um so we want to just take that straight across um, because 
because I can use it for the other one. And what happened there? Just do that again. There we go. Right. And then we can easily uh, with any luck. Oh, that one's just too short. Never mind. Just use it for something else. Okay, so that should be fine. That's going to go um, over there. I'm going to use this glue because it dries nice and clear. Hold it on the side that you don't want glue on. Oh, that's not a very straight line, is it? Thank God the stuff dries clear. Okay, there we go. So that'll do the job. And then match it up with the corners. And then... There we go. Look at that. Okay. Right, so we've got that all sorted. So, so far, so good. Everything is now complete on the underside of this, except for the decoration. So that's all right. We'll put that one over there. And we will now start with this inner piece here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover all the sides first of all. So that's all, all the sides. So we'll start with the, the one in the middle. So the one in the middle um, looks like this, I think, <laughs> she says. Yeah, and I think that one goes on the other side, right? That looks about right. So we're going to put that one over there because it's really pretty and I like it. And again, oops, we just need to get this out the way. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to um, just do a bit of a... Now, of course, if you... You can take out the, the pencil lines, which I probably should have done. Um, there we go. Meaning these ones down here. Okay, so there we go. That's all sorted. And now I'm going to just stick this piece here and as I keep telling you <laughs> don't know if that's helpful or what or annoying but you can tell me again um, you can see it's now coming from that piece so we've taken pieces from all over on that sheet so that one's going to go over there I'm going to grab my fabric tack I'm going to stick it down just like that And then we're going to line up these corners again. Remember, stay away from the fold lines. There we go. A little bit further down. There we go. So that's looking beautiful. Off you go. And then again, I don't think this piece is going to be wide enough. It's just short. So it's just a case again of measuring. It's about two inches. And we're going to just do that again quickly. Okay, so. Okay, there we go. Alright, so with this one. The rubber, and we're going to stick it on right over here. So, what have you all been doing today? Um, I've 
putting in everything in my life so still with it busy with the marking um weather changed got um thought i needed to turn the heating on today you know <laughs> suddenly got so cold after all this lovely sunshine we've been having so that was a bit of a shocker um but i've just done my groceries for the week so i'm feeling perky because i bought chocolate so that's always good you know i was wanting um a lovely um fresh cream um scones with devon uh clotted cream but they had no scones they had the cream but no scones so instead i bought cherry and almond tart because i love a marzipan and almond flavored frangipan oh my goodness so i'm having a piece of that uh, for pudding <laughs> not healthy at all anyway I didn't have any birthday cake, so that's going to have to do, you see. So that's it. Right, now what we want to do now is we want to cover these panels up over here. So on this side, I'm going to stick this one, and I'll show you now. And on this side, I'm going to stick that one. And again, it's from these, as I said, two to a page. So what I did was I've taken one from that side and um one from that side and then on the other side i took one from that side and one from that side I changed it around just to make it look a bit different so we want to just stick those down as well so let's do that quickly okay again um uh, it's not this side we need to worry about any flaps it's the other side so that's all right and we are going to put in some of those thumb thingies <laughs> So that you can get your journal card out all right without battling so if any of you know what that thumb thing is called then tell me in the comments and i've been loving seeing all the people sharing their beautiful makes with me on instagram or on their blogs or on facebook and that's been so lovely to see so thank you carry on doing that i just love seeing what you're doing and such beautiful work such creative ladies so I've thoroughly enjoyed watching all that you guys are up to and making. And it's so inspirational and so lovely to see your interpretation of things that I might have inspired you to try. So that's really lovely. Thank you so much. Right, I want to just stick this down. Carol, I do love these envelopes. You'll have to tell me where you got them from because I'm sure people are going to ask me anyway. And... I need I would like some to get, get some more myself um, so you'll have to tell me if it's if there's a place we can get them right so there's those two over there now before we make those thumb thingies let's turn it over and cover the other side so what we have to do here is um, again as I explained to you I've now got these cut in the opposite direction so let's just see um, that one had, that one goes up like that, so I then had this one over here and this one over here, like that. Okay, so, getting my act together. Okay, so we want this one over here and that one over there so let's stick that down now with these ones you've got the flap that's open here so be very mindful that although we will be going right to the top here you don't want to put a thick layer of glue in fact I am going to um, take this this is our opening we want to just um, have a very thin bit of glue here on the edge and a little bit up there and the rest is going to be um, we'll use the other glue I'm using this one it's just because of the nozzle so if I'm going to stick that like that I then just want to leave about a, a good quarter inch so I don't want my tag to get stuck on that section when I, I do that oops 
I'm using this glue because um, no stitching on this lot today. Okay, so let me just get that all lined up nicely. Okay, so there is that side and then the same with this. So I hope this is all in frame. Again, we want to just do a little bit there. And I think I'm going to need to turn this to get a good angle. And then a little bit like that over there. And then we'll take this one again. How did I want it? Uh, I wanted it like that. So I do like that thin nozzled glue. Um, it's made my life easier. Although I haven't got any fancy glue in there. It's just PVA glue. That glitter, art glitter glue, I haven't tried it. It sounds wonderful. And lots of you have made suggestions. So thank you for that. Um, but it is expensive. I think it's £20 here in the UK. Which is quite a lot. But it looks like it's a fair size bottle. So I suppose it's going to last a long time. So there is that. Um... Right, so let's just put this back on quickly. Um, and then we've got this piece that is going to go in the middle here. Now, um, yeah, that's right. So that's like that. And then that goes like that. But I was thinking of putting it like that. So um, nothing is nothing that's going to tuck in there although you could make it shorter and have a secret spot if you wanted to but I'm not going to do that but you could and no it'd be it'd be like a secret place to put something and I know we like secret places I definitely do <laughs> I, I don't write in a journal I have tried but I think I've got trust issues <laughs> I even tried um, doing it on at one point. I've tried journaling on an online sort of journal where I had to have a password that nobody could find it. But then even that, I thought, uh, didn't sound the best. So I let, let that one go too. I would love to journal. I don't know why I don't do it. And I definitely wouldn't journal in any of the journals I've bought because that would just deface them and I'd be horrified. So, are any of you like that, or is that just me? Um, I need to make something that I'm going to journal in, I think. Right, we've covered all the areas. You'd be glad to know. Um, and now what remains to be done is we want to put it together. So let's, um, before we do that, let's then quickly make these little thumb marks, all these things with a circle punch here. Um, and the way I just did that, was I worked out the middle so I just took my my mat here and I said one square two square three four right so that's the middle um and then I just did the same with this side uh, why is that sticking out so much I just want to straighten this up because that's annoying me now like that it's a bit um better I mean not so much that's it much better things will be right sorry totally distracted there okay so I've got that side and now I wanted to do this side um we just line it up there and it's one two three four and in the middle okay so now when I take this I just go down in the middle um, and I'm going to put off there's quite a few layers and then the same here so I'm going to do that about there and there we go so there we've got our little thumb things ready like that on each side okay so we've got that done that's all covered looking beautiful 
and now what we want to do is just put it all together now so it's as simple as that so the way to do that is we want to fold these two in quickly um, and then these in <laughs> like that and then just make sure that it's all nice and fitting properly before you go and glue it down all right and then what we want to do is, um, this one's also annoying me, sorry, I, I've got to just have it right. This one's also not nice and straight. Better. okay so what we want to do now is that's gonna go like that that's the base this is gonna go this way and we want to just fit it nicely like that snug that's better press it down um, and then we want to fold those over like that and see that we are happy with everything before we go and um, glue it down and we are happy with everything that looks like it wants to be like that so turn it over all closed up and I say do it like that because these won't um, match exactly if I show you that close up can you see there is a little sliver um, right there where it doesn't match up and that's why I'm saying fold it all together so it'll lie naturally the way it wants to lie and then just lift the top one up take your glue oops <laughs> and then um, glue all over here don't go too close to the edge you don't want it to ooze out but you do want this to stick um, and that's its natural position so just glue that back in place and hold it down for a second I mean this glue um, closes uh, does its thing really quickly so mm -hmm. now you've got it exactly where you want it to be and while that's just doing its thing I'm going to stamp a little stamp on the bottom here what did I do with it um, sorry just moving that out the way I'm going to get some of my archival ink and I had a little butterfly on here and when I lift this up I really should have put the butterfly over here not like I did with the other one so we'll just press that there and we will just put the butterfly over there like that okay so when we lift it up then we see it the right way around Okay, so there's everything so far. I'm really liking that. So now let's quickly, quickly just put it all together. So the decoration on the front here um, is, again, I'm going to use the Sizzix, um Wildflower uh, die cuts very quickly. Um, and then it's just a case of putting this all on. Okay, so that's the first one, and I'm going to go from there. It doesn't matter that it's going to go over. I think it just adds to it. I'm definitely not the box thinker, so I don't go in the lines. The school phoned me once when Paige was just a little thing of about five, and they were very concerned I had to go in. Um, they, didn't, they weren't happy because she coloured in the horse, um, but not in one colour. She'd coloured the horse in stripes of all the rainbow colours. And they were not happy. She also wasn't colouring people's hair brown or black or blonde or red. It was green and blue and whatever. 
Um, so this was like 17 years, no, what was it? It was about 15 years ago and obviously those kind of shades weren't in vogue. Um, and I just said to them, um, what did they want me to do about it? Because really, um, I'm not going to encourage my daughter to think in the box. If that's the way she sees things and wants to do it, then I'm all for it. So sorry for you kind of thing, you know. Anything goes. I'm not going to go and stifle the child's imagination now. Um, we spend our lives trying to think out the box and I'm not about to put it in a box. So they didn't like that very much, <laughs> as you do. And I just thought, no, that's just ridiculous. Just let it be, you know. Anyway. Right, um, with these here being a bit too much over the edge, I'll cut those off. But the rest of them like that, I think it looks really nice that they've got little bits extending here and everywhere. All right, so that looks lovely. And then I'm just going to take one of my um, Pinterest butterflies and I'm going to just stick that over there. So it looks like it's just hovering. And then before that, I'm going to take a piece of my uh, script. I'm just going to, this is just a genuine script, don't quite like that perfect side there, but hey ho, we'll make it imperfect, and then we'll stick that down first. Right. So that's going to go there. This is going to go on top. Like that. We're going to put that over there. We're going to grab a, um, sorry for banging that over you. I'm going to just put a little pearl over there. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll just stick that over there like that. Okay. Okay. And then all we need to do now is just fill this up so I have done the made the stuff you'll be glad to know already so what I've done here is I've got two cards that I've just made with the scraps remaining from what we've done so um, the one's going to go in here like that um, okay that's the one and then the other one's going to go in here so that's the other one so those all that'll go down first that'll go over like that and then this one over here oh we forgot to no I didn't make a a tab on this one um, this one's going to go in here now the thing with this one that I learned is that you don't want to make this tab stick out too far you need to push it in a bit because it's going to come into contact with this section here so make sure that you you push that in sufficiently so that it's not going to hamper that bit over there so that was that um, you could stick pictures on the other side if you want but i've got them as journaling spots i've made again a little tag with some of the scraps that i had over and various bits and pieces so i'm going to put that in the top over there um, along with um, one of these pieces of ephemera and then um, i'm just going to close that up lift this up here and then i'm just putting these pretty pieces and I think these came from my porch prints if I'm thinking about it. Ok, 
Okay, so that's what's going to go in there because they're quite flat. All right, so then this closes up like that. Oh, you see that needs to go in a little bit further. Um, and then that closes over like that. Now, it is a bit springy at the moment, but what I've found is if you just take a little clip or a peg and leave that on there overnight, it does um, sort of flatten it or put it under a book. That's another thing. All right, so there we have it. That's our little project for today. Here's the other one I made um, as my prototype. Um, so I'm quite happy with that as well. Um, and you can see this one's lying a lot better than I needed to just shove that in a bit further, I think. And there we have our two little um, envelope little things for today. So I hope you've enjoyed that with me today. I hope you, you've been liked it. I love those hydrangeas. I hope you've enjoyed making this with me today. I've really enjoyed it. I want to thank Carol for the lovely envelope she sent me and for the challenge. I did try and look for Renoir, Carol, but um, I don't think she has it anymore. Um, perhaps I'll ask her about that one. Um, but it did look really pretty. Um, so if any of you have got any other suggestions that you want me to use a specific paper or a certain size envelope, then put it in the comments below. I'm always up for a challenge um, and I'll see what I can come up with with them. So let me know what you think. Carry on sharing those lovely projects you're doing um, and tag me in. Um, that will be absolutely lovely. And um, I look forward to seeing what you're all going to make um, and share with me going forward. And I'll try and think of some other ideas for us to work with next time. So thank you, everybody. You're all fantastic. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you then. Bye bye.